to do these kinds of things. Now, um, you're the executive director of Massburg. Tell us a little bit more about Massburg and what you do. Um, now I know the bottle bill is, is a major sure, effort, but yeah. you do a lot of other good projects. Well, PERG stands for Public Interest Research Group, and we basically see ourselves as the voice of the public interest. And the bottle bill is only one example of where we think that the special, powerful special interests are dominating the debate. So, for example, if you, um, again, just as an example, the last legislative hearing for the bottle bill was October of 2009. Hundreds of people showed up in support, all different kinds of organizations, local, state, um, you know, the, the Mass Municipal Association, the League of Women Voters, the Sierra Club, um, you know, all, we had high school students coming. It was a very broad cross-section of the public. The only testifiers against the bottle bill were the, um, the mass food association, the grocery manufacturers, the lobbyists for the big, huge supermarkets and the liquor retailers. It's all these big businesses that don't want to be told how to do business, you know, that these uh, containers have to be recycled, have to have a deposit. So it's just one example of where the public feels strongly that a certain, you know, policy or decision is in their interest, but there are big special interests that are blocking it up on Beacon Hill. And so Mass, at Massburg, we have, you know, we have staff that are really focused on running campaigns that promote the public interest. Um, we did, just to go back to the bottle bill, we did a poll in January, um, a statewide poll. The Mass Inc. polling group conducted it for That's us. That's linked to the magazine, it's Mass Inc., and they also do polling. And they found 77% of the public is in support of updating the bottle bill. Yet we've been lobbying on this for years. Why, why, why is that? You know, people ask me, well, why can't the bill just go through? The public supports it. Well, come up to Beacon Hill. You'll see, you know, at the hearing who's lobbying against it, who's blocking it. The, the powerful special interests have lobbyists and have resources that the public just doesn't have. And so we try to serve as one voice on issues, you know, like uh, recycling, like mass transit. We're promoting mass transit. We have a, a bill to do that. We are trying to push health care reforms. We have uh, one of our bills that passed last session will enable, well, will mandate that the state put the entire state budget up online. So as citizens, we can see, we can have the tools to understand how our government is spending our money. So, um, so we just try and be the public interest voice on behalf of what we think the majority of the public supports and where we see the special interest coming in and blocking good policy ideas and good solutions. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm happy to report that Cambridge uh, both the municipality uh, and most elected officials have actually signed up um, for the bottle bill. That's right. We're, we in Cambridge have responsive and progressive legislators who we've elected. So good for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, now let, let's look at, at the summary here of, of the advantages, some of those you have already mentioned, but maybe you want to just take us through the benefits again. Sure. Well, the, um, the, the decrease in litter, there's two ways to look at that. One, um, container litter, so as what we were talking about earlier, um, container litter as one type of litter re gets reduced somewhere between 60 and 80 percent when you have uh, container deposit legislation. So that's the decrease in litter that way. But then of all litter, everything, um, all litter and, um, and trash as well, it's roughly 4%. Because even though containers seem um, small and they're lightweight by volume, they take up yeah. space. So uh, that's two ways to look at um, the first bullet point. The second, supporting small businesses. One of the biggest allies we have in the coalition is the Mass Redemption Coalition because they set up, um, and, and we have a couple in Cambridge, a couple in Somerville, um, redemption centers where you, the only thing they do is take back the returns. Mm -hmm. And they're going out of business because they want more containers in the bill. There's an, um, an increase for what the distributors pay them. So we, we feel, and 
not not just that we feel this way, but that one of the biggest supporters of the update is the Mass Redemption Coalition, a lot of small businesses that need this update to stay in business. Mm -hmm. So that's the second one. Third, I talked earlier about um, the difference between containers that are recycled that have the deposit mm -hmm. versus that don't. And then, you know, most containers these days are made of um, PET, which is a type of plastic. And there are so, there's such a demand for recycled plastic on the market these days. And yet, as we saw earlier, 78% of these containers that are made of this stuff are going into landfills and incinerators. It makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. um, the next bullet point, you know, sometimes people say, well, we have curbside. We don't, we don't need to do any more with the bottle bill. Well, we need both because curbside catches what you drink at home. But when you're on the go, at work, at school, on the job, um, you, 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 many, most people don't you know, then cart those containers home. We need a system where there are you know, vending machines everywhere. And once there's an updated bottle bill, there will be. The reverse vending machine companies are also very anxious. You know, the place where you stick your container yeah. in and you get the nickel back. They also are ready and willing and able and happy to see a bottle bill, an updated bottle bill pass. And then I said earlier, we did a statewide poll and we know that 77% um, of the public, which is really overwhelming. I mean, it's hard to find anything that 77% of the public uh, agrees on. Mm -hmm. And this was across the state, across party line, across gender. I mean, it was just really widespread support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I think this was a, a great idea to do a poll yes. because sometimes you assume that everybody, a large number is in favor, but exactly. until you actually do a poll, you don't know that. Right. Well, luckily, I mean, the core group of the Bottleville Coalition, Charles River Conservancy, Sierra Club, Mass Audubon, Environmental League, Surf Rider, oh, these are some of the groups right here. You know, when we sat down last fall after the bill didn't pass, we, we had that exact conversation. We thought, you know, it seems like our members all support this and all the um, you know public input we get seems to be in support but let's go do a poll and make sure that we haven't gotten too inside of our own heads and so it was great that the coalition decided to do this and you know the the head of the polling group w when he gave me the results he said you don't see this very often you don't mm -hmm. see this kind of widespread support yeah for yeah. an idea so yeah it was it was heartening to know that our um, our conclusions weren't falsely drawn. In, Good. So. Um, well, in case you just joined us, um, you're watching the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. And my guest is Janice Dominitz about talk about the bottle bill. And if you missed the beginning of the show, you can go to YouTube in a few days and you can get that show on YouTube um, as you can get other old shows of the Charles River Conservancy. My teenagers will be very impressed that I'm on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, it, it's, um, we're, we're even Twittering and we, uh, have, we have a blog, so I guess we have, uh, it, it's the way to, to reach young people and we are reaching a lot of young people. I think this bottle bill might be actually something that is of interest to young people. Oh, absolutely. Well, we have, um, at Massburg, we have 15 uh, college campus chapters. And this is a big campaign for, for all of them. They're very enthusiastic about, um, not only about recycling and reducing litter, but they also see, you know, as we were talking about a moment ago, why is a piece of legislation so widely supported getting blocked on Beacon Hill? They're interested in the politics of it as well. Mm -hmm. So on all those levels, we have really strong involvement from, um, from young folks. Yeah, and it's something very concrete you know, we all see these bottles piling up in the river, in the bushes, on the street. And it's a kind of instinct for young people, well, let's gather them maybe to raise some money or let's gather them to clean up. And then they see the transition of how there's a policy behind it and that they need to get involved. It's not enough to pick up bottles, although it's great. A lot of people do that along the Charles. A lot of people walk the Charles with trash cans. But we shouldn't, as you say, we shouldn't have to rely on that. We should have a policy in place that makes sense economically, ecologically. Um, that's the way we should operate. Absolutely. I want to go back um, a moment while we're talking about Beacon Hill to just mention quickly the yes, legislators please. in Cambridge. 
Um, there are, if you live in the city of Cambridge, you're represented by one of three senators, either um, Senator Petroselli, Senator Tolman, or Senator DiDomenico. Um, Senator Petroselli and Senator DiDomenico are co-sponsors of the bill. Um, Senator Tolman has not yet put his name on it, so um, he needs some support from the public to do that. And then um, you have one of six representatives, if you live in Cambridge, um, uh, Rep. Brownsberger, Rep. Wolf, who's you know the longtime champion and chief sponsor of the bill, Representative Toomey, uh, Representative Walls, Representative Rushing, and Representative Hecht. And they're all supporters, as I say, Rep. Wolf, is the you know the main the main gal behind it but they're all supporters and they need to hear thank you mm -hmm. as well because it it's great that they are co-sponsors but for them to really give it a push and put their muscle behind it they need to know their constituents um, are thinking about this and it's a priority for them so it doesn't matter where you live in Cambridge it's important that you um, thank and uh, and give an enthusiastic shout out to the supporters. And if you live in Senator Tolman's district, um, please remind him that this is important to you and see if he'll come out um, and put his name on it. Well, Janet, I want to thank you for coming out to the, the Conservancy um, show. And thank you for the work you're doing. And we look forward to working with you. And I think now it's up to our viewers to, to um, Thank those who have supported this. Do not those who are still on the on the how do you call that <laughs> on the edge. On yes, the edge. That's, that's right. right. And um, I think this is a. It has been a very instructive for for me, and I hope for you too. And so thank you for the good work you do. And we'll we'll hope we'll have a. This is a our change. year. This yeah. is the year for this the bottle bill. Year. And I, well, again, as a Cambridge resident, as a and as an advocate for the bottle, I want to thank you and the Conservancy for all the work that you do. Thank you very much.